Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So not too long ago, I did a video showing you guys how to install upfitter switches in Super Duty trucks. And at the end of that video, we didn't get to wiring anything into the truck, but I told you guys to be back with a video doing that. And so today that's what we're going to do. So even if you don't have a Super Duty, this video, a lot of this is still gonna to apply to any vehicle that you're trying to wire up. I'm going to be showing you guys how to hook the light bar up to your high beams. You can, of course, just hook it up straight to your upfitter switches or dash switch, whatever you're working with. I find that to be a little lazy because usually when you're running the light bar, you want it to come on with your high beams. And it's just kind of an extra step to have to throw that switch on and off. So I like mine to be triggered with my high beam switch. So as you can see, I do have my light bar already in place. I did kind of screw up when I ordered this bar and didn't measure, just kind of went off what I was seeing online. And as you can see here, it's a little too narrow to fit on these factory pieces right here that are part of the frame or that connect to the frame. And so I had to do these little metal brackets here to kind of widen that out and give me a wider or a narrower, I should say, uh, mounting surface. As far as the light bar itself goes, it's just a cheap one off Amazon, single row. Don't know how well it's gonna do. I'll probably end up switching it up later, but this is just kind of what I've got for now, and it'll get us through showing you guys how to do the wiring process. So first things first, we'll go ahead and run you guys through the supplies that you're going to need. You're gonna need some wire. I've got red and black here. It's 12 gauge. You always wanna go with something thicker with something that's going to draw a little bit of power. Of course, light bars aren't gonna draw that much, but better to be just a little on the larger wire size. Next, you're gonna to wanna to get some wire loom. You can use the plastic split loom, or I like to use this braided wire loom, which is just a little more flexible, ends up being a little cleaner, I think, than the plastic split loom, especially with stuff that's not gonna get exposed to a lot of high heat. Next up, you're gonna need a relay. You can skip this if you're not planning on using your high beams as a trigger wire and wiring it in all with your high beam switch. If you wanna go just straight to your upfitter switches, you will not need this. Then you're going to need some female spade connectors that'll go to the prongs on the relay. And then finally, you'll need some ring terminals just for, you don't need the whole box, but you'll need a ring terminal for making your ground connection. Next thing you guys are gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and open your hood. You're gonna come over here on the driver's side. You can see your master cylinder brake booster. And then there's this wiring harness right here. You're gonna follow that down just a little. You can kind of see right there, the camera's focusing on those wires that are going there. Those are the wires that are going, passing through the firewall, and you can kind of see right there the ends that are have got tape over them or whatever it is, but those are passing through the firewall, and then you can connect those to your upfitter switches. So just a quick note, these wires here are not already connected to the upfitter switches inside the cab. It's just basically kind of a jumper wire that goes from in the engine bay to under the dash and then you connect it to whichever wire you want for whichever switch on your upfitter switch panel. So my understanding is they did it this way, that way you could bring in power from out here like a light bar or you could wire something up inside the cab like a dash cam or something and that way the wires were just, you got basically two choices. It's an extra connection you have to make but not too big of a deal. All right, so we've got these wires pulled out to where we can use them. It looks like we got a, I think it's a gray, and red, a white and red. I think that one's a solid white. And then finally, what do we got here? A brown with a white stripe. So basically you're just gonna wanna make sure and make a mental note of whichever color wire you use. That way when you go inside the cab, you'll be able to choose the correct wire for making the connection inside. So the first thing we're gonna do is get access to the wires behind our headlight, so that way we can go ahead and tap into that and use that for the trigger wire to our relay. In order to do this, the best way is going to be to go ahead and remove our grill, because we gotta get the headlight out. I went ahead and pulled the battery out just to see if there was any way to get to there, but the tray is still kind of in the way and that would require me to remove a whole bunch of other stuff and it's gonna be just a huge pain so I'm gonna go ahead and pull the grill off from what I've read, it's not that hard to do. And that'll let us get to all the headlight mount bolts and we can pull that out and go ahead and get to that wire. So to get this grill off, you got one 10 millimeter bolt right there, another one there, another one there, and then another one. And I guess there can be some possible other hold down clips, but 
from what it looks like on mine, I've just got the four bolts. The grill's gonna kind of tilt away and then we'll be able to get to the little clips at the bottom that hold it in. So that actually went incredibly easy, guys. There was just the four 10 millimeter bolts. And then you can see here where those clips go in. There's five of them. And basically the hole right there in the tops, you just kind of push down on that with a screwdriver and the whole thing just drops right out. So something I didn't mention, and I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of hate for, is that I didn't mark the position where the bolts were that held the grill on at the top. I don't know, maybe your truck is a lot cleaner than mine, but mine is fairly dirty, so it pretty much marked itself for me. But if you have a way cleaner truck than me, that's something you might wanna do, is just take a piece of tape or a marker or something and kind of mark where your uh, bolts were. That way the grill lines up nice when you go to put it back in. So now that the grill is out of the way, you can kind of see more what we're working with. We've got 10 millimeter bolts, one, two. There's another one way back in there you can't really see, but there is one there. And then there's a fourth one up there. So we'll pull those four bolts out and this thing should pop right out of here. So we got the headlight out and it appears that somebody else has already been back here. I'm not really quite sure what they were doing because it's on the turn signal wiring, but we've got some wonderful scotch locks, the greatest connectors ever known to man and that you could possibly use. And they've been cut off here. So at some point something was connected to them. Not sure what, really don't like that being there. I'm gonna get rid of that. And then right here is our actual headlight wiring. So I'll be showing you guys which wire we're going to tap into and I'll have a diagram as well for you guys. I went ahead and pulled that split loom off and pulled the electrical tape back and just to see what we're working with. So we got three wires. We got a brown with a light blue stripe, a solid black, and then we've got a gray with a brown stripe. So going over to our schematic, you can see that the brown with the blue stripe is for our low beams. You've got the black, which is the ground, of course, and then you've got the gray with the brown stripe, and that is going to be our high beam wire. So that's what we're going to tap into, and we're not going to be connecting the light bar to this. This is just going to be the trigger wire that's going to go to our relay and go ahead and allow our upfitter switch to send power to the light bar. So looking at the relay schematic, it's going to end up looking something like this. And the reason for this is you don't really want, this circuit was designed to power the headlights, not have extra lights overloading it. So you do have the potential to overload that. You could possibly screw up the body control module and whatnot. So you wanna use this relay if you're going to be using the high beam wire as your trigger, just so that way it protects the whole circuit and it's getting powered off of your upfitter switches. Like I was saying before, if you are just going to go directly to the upfitter switch, just completely ignore everything I just said. Go right to that. You won't even need the relay. You'll just be going straight to that. There's a relay pack already with those upfitter switches that's behind your dash, which you can see if uh, you go back and watch my last video where we installed these upfitter switches. So inside the truck under the dash, you've got this bundle of wires that passes through the firewall. And I already pulled mine down, but there's this, I think I showed you guys in my last video, but there's this big group of wires here that aren't connected to anything. So I went ahead and pulled out my four that are for my upfitter switches and that go there on the other side of the firewall. And I went ahead and taped them together just so that way they're all there for future use. And then I went ahead and taped the rest of the bundle up there. It's up to you guys what you wanna do. I'd probably recommend doing that just so that way you know where they're at and they're all easily accessible. But now we've got our four wires, our brown with white stripe, our white with orange stripe, our gray with orange stripe, and then our solid white. So those are all ready to go, and we basically just choose one, and then we'll make the connection to our upfitter switch. So now that we've located all of our wires that pass through under the dash, I've went ahead and pulled off my panel that goes underneath the steering wheel and located the four wires that go to my upfitter switches. So for switch number one, you're gonna have a yellow wire, then for switch number two, you're gonna have a green and brown wire. Switch number three is gonna be violet and green. And then switch number four is going to be just solid brown.
you'll notice that these wires don't correspond with the wires that pass through the dash. Doesn't matter, don't know why they did that, but it is what it is. So it's basically just up to you to choose which wire you want to use as far as the pass-through wires. The wires up here, like I said, that'll let you know which one goes to which switch, but there's a little more to it than that because the yellow and the green and brown are both 25 amp switches, then the violet and green is a 10 amp, and then the brown is a 15 amp. So it's just kind of up to you to figure out what load your accessory is going to be pulling. But for myself, I don't have a lot of stuff to hook up anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and just use the solid yellow so that way my light bar, front facing light bar is just switch position number one. That makes the most sense to me. So it's kind of stupid how they do this. There's not a lot of slack right there and definitely not a lot of slack underneath. I'm gonna go to my solid white wire and I'm gonna have to use a jumper in between because there just is not enough wire to make the connection without an additional piece. So go ahead and get a little chunk of wire and make that connection. All right guys, so now that we're done with the wiring inside, we're coming on to this relay. And so looking at our diagram to kind of dumb it down how things work for you guys, with the terminal marked 86 on your relay is where you're going to have your trigger wire coming in from your relay. 85 is going to be a ground. 30 is going to be the wire coming from your upfitter switch. And then 87 is going to be your actual light bar. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna have that trigger wire going. And once that tells the relay to supply power, it's going to close the gate on that relay and that'll allow your upfitter switch to supply power from the battery to your light bar. So this basically protects your factory headlight circuit and just makes everything work all nice. So obviously I got my four wires there. We're using my white wire. And then looking up here, I can see where I've already got a nice ground right up here. So I went ahead and made up a short wire and we'll be using that to mount in there. My relay, I'm gonna hopefully be able to just kind of set it somewhere down in there so that way I don't have to splice onto that white wire. I'll be able to just use it right off that. All right, guys, so I've got all my wires ran. Where you choose to put your ground for your light bar is up to you. I went up to here, used a self-tapping screw after I drilled a hole and grounded it up there. Then I just ran the power wire all along back here until we came up to meet with the headlight harness. From there, I went ahead and put my wire in Got it all nice and heat shrunk up in there and just continued all along the way. We came all the way up here into the engine compartment and I've got my trigger wire from the high beam switch and then also the output wire that's gonna be carrying the power to the light bar also on there. So everything is all in. Gotta figure out a way to kind of fasten that in there a little better, but I really like this kind of more fabric-y type wire loom. It looks a lot better. I think it's a lot more flexible and easy to work with. So I've got all that cleaned up. Just going to fix up these uh, scotch locks here, get rid of those and go ahead and slap the headlight in and we'll see if this thing works. All right, guys, let's see if it works. So we didn't try the switch at least. Definitely bright. Well, there you have it guys. Super simple process. Like I said, a lot of this is gonna apply to any vehicle that you're working on as far as getting your light bar to work with your headlight, high beam switch, and just the wiring in general. If you got any suggestions on things that could have been done better, make sure to leave a comment below and uh, help some people out. And other than that, we'll catch you guys in the next one.